So my name is okay. Gary Dehart, and I am the uh, publisher and managing partner of Insightful Accountant. And just want to welcome everybody to uh, Future Forward Security and Staffing Summit. The session we are going to be talking about streamline and secure some practical security lessons that Kelly Parks is going to share with us. She's going to give her own little bio in a minute. But before she does that, we do have a little bit of um, housekeeping items. Number one, I forgot this yesterday. I want to say thank you to our sponsors. We've got Swiznet, Davo by Avalara, and Tech Guru. If, uh, without their support, we can't have this, uh, this event. So thank you for to uh, those three companies for their support. This event is, this session is eligible for CPE. And as you know, you have to be here for 50 minutes, five zero, five zero minutes. You have to participate in at least three of the polling questions. Do we have three or four in there? I think we only have three, right? So don't miss one and don't email me if you do. So you have three polling one questions. Of them is, one of them yeah. is right at the end. So yeah, got to stay. Um, and then this, this is being recorded and this will be shared on YouTube. You will receive a link to the, uh, our YouTube channel in the email afterwards in the email follow-up, as well as a copy of the presentation, both of which I will put in the chat once Kelly takes over and I go dark. Um, that is our, that's what I've got to say. Kelly, thank you so much for taking some time and sharing your knowledge here. And I will just let you roll it from here. I'm gonna go dark, but I'll be here if you need me. Okay, great. And of course, Gary, thanks for having me. Um, it's always, if I, I could, I'm totally a security nerd and I could talk about it all day. Fair warning, this isn't in the weeds of like all of the <clears throat> types of ransomware and how to uh, retrieve your files or any of this. This is truly a, a session on practical security lessons. This is the stuff that a lot of people, a lot of firms have simply not done. So I'm really hoping that these are actionable security lessons for everyone, uh, things that you can do right now to mitigate some of the uh, issues that we have in particular with the cloud-based program. So streamline and secure practical security lessons. We are going to talk about implementing a password management application. And I'm gonna tell you my story of uh, my before and after of having one. We're gonna talk about enabling two-factor on your technology and low touch, how to share it with your team because that seems to be a bit of an issue. We're gonna talk about three location data redundancy. And we are going to run through how to craft a peace of mind policy. So not only are you going to start instituting some of these um, practical security lessons, you are going to craft up a document to share with your team. And then you're going to craft one up that you share with the world to let clients know you're thinking about things that they haven't even thought of. Because I find that there's two kinds of um, people in the world. Those that jump into the cloud and don't even give the security a thought. They're just all in and away we go, or regular computer programs. They're just all in, away we go. They don't even give it another thought. If you can elevate yourself and say, hey, I've thought of these things to protect you and you haven't even thought of them, you're higher level. And then you've got the people that you can't convince to use the type of technology you would like to collaborate with them in because they are so fearful of the cloud programs. And many of these people don't even equate that desktop programs have security issues as well, or that online banking has security issues, all of it. So uh, this helps reassure some of those clients you either have that you wanna migrate to cloud programs, you wanna migrate to hosted desktop programs or clients that you're bringing in and you wanna have these security discussions with them. You've already got the policies in place. I'm Kelly Parks, Certified Professional Bookkeeper here in Canada with CPB Canada, which is our certifying body. I also am a cloud process creator. I craft up templates for bookkeepers and accounting firms so they don't have to. Workflows, standard operating processes, manuals, client guides, uh, employee onboarding, all kinds of stuff. And um, I have a bookkeeping practice myself. So I'm going to show you my website, such as it is with my security policy, which is front facing. It's actually a page on my website. I am a runner, water skier, snow skier, and live music fan. 
I am a internet with uh, the Intuit International Trainer Writer Network. I am a member of the Fresh Books Partner Council, and I'm certified and partnered in over a dozen cloud applications. Yak, and yak, 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 Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Um, so the cloud is fantastic. You have the freedom to work anywhere, anytime from any internet connected device. And that means hotspotting your phone as well. So um, it's pretty freeing. You can collaborate in real time or asynchronously with people, your team or your clients and share your data seamlessly. And for me, this is such a magical process. Even sometimes when I'm in the accounting platforms, I'm like, this is gold. And I'm working with a client, maybe we're on Zoom and I'm showing them something and it's changing in their program in real time on their computer, super cool. Yesterday, I was collaborating with some folks. We're doing a panel at Connect in Las Vegas coming up. And the panelists that I'm moderating, we were working at the same time in a document that we had shared, a Google Doc that we had shared, and they're making changes. They're completing some work. I'm working on it. We can all, it's, we can all see the changes that are being made. We're not shipping this document around to each other and hoping we fill in the right version of it. Super cool. You are not tying up resources, storage, or financial IT servers, IT protocols to location-based devices and data. So the cloud is fantastic until it's not. Running a cloud-based business is not without trouble. You need to mitigate them. You need to be out ahead of them. And so today we are going to learn about practical, simple to implement. Implement. That's the key. This is the stuff you can get started on. Protocols to streamline and secure your cloud-based systems. We're going to take a look at how to craft up the security policy document and make sure everybody understands it and how to action it. So where are the threats coming from? Natural disasters, fire, wind, water, hurricanes, technology blunders, sometimes Integrations, especially in our accounting programs, can cause trouble. That's a big one. Uh, the technology has fails in general. Data within the technology disappears, all kinds of technology blunders. Bad people. Of course, this is one of the big ones that we want to mitigate. Team errors. We're all human. We all make mistakes. What are you going to do to recover data when problems have come from team and client errors? So I want to talk about password manager adoption going all in. If you aren't going all the way, why go at all? And this was something that happened to me. I had one password for a long time. I was paying. So a password manager app essentially takes all of the programs that you need to log into. It's got your login URL. So you just click it and you can, you can get into there or you click it as a bookmark on your uh, Chrome browser. And it auto fills your uh, login user ID and your password information. Some of them also have two-factor verification that you can use to fill in the two-factor um, information information that the applications want. And I don't actually know the passwords to my programs. I no longer know any of them, but it was a long road to get there for me because I had to give up control of knowing my passwords, of having a password system that stank. It was, some were reused, some were easy to guess, whatever the case may be. But using the um, Chrome, especially to save my passwords, even the ones that I had started to make complicated ones, it was easy, it was simple, um, it was the devil I knew. And uh, I did not want to make the change to a password uh, manager application. And then I gave myself a deadline. This is two years ago, April. And I said, you gotta get this done, Kelly. This is ridiculous. You need to have more secure passwords. You need to get them out of Chrome. You need to use a proper system. And so uh, this is my journey. 
I enabled the password manager on my Chrome as a Chrome extension. So extensions are little widgets that sit on the side of your Chrome browser that do things for you. You can take screenshots, you can record videos. I've got a Zapier push button. There's all kinds of them, including my password manager, which is 1Password. My 1Password manager. And the reason you want it as a Chrome extension is because you can push the little button of the extension and put in your single use password or your pin code for one password. And now it's going to autofill anything that you are using on that Chrome browser. Also in the password managers, you can put all kinds of other details in there. Um, whether it's security questions, you can put in credit cards, you can put in addresses. So you can use password managers to autofill all kinds of information for you as well. But you need to enable the password extension on Chrome or Edge or whatever they are on all of your Chrome people. You need to download the app to your computer so you can easily make edits and create one password backups. I'm using the word one password here. <laughs> it doesn't matter which one you use. They're all great. Pick one that just kind of suits you. So you download the app so that you've got it on your desktop, on your laptop, whatever device that you're using it on. And that's where you can easily make edits to any of the logins that you have. And one password, I can't have it have all of the passwords that I don't know and not have some sort of form of backup for it. So I have a monthly schedule where I download my one password information and it goes on a USB stick so that I always have a place where my passwords are stored. And if one password, last pass, any of them, if they are offline, or if they have some sort of data breach, at least I've got all of the information so that I can still access it without going in and doing a password reset on all of my applications. So make sure you have data location redundancy on your password manager app. LastPass has gone down twice now in the last couple of years. So this is a really great use case scenario on it. You need to put the app on all of your devices. This is the mistake that I made. I did not put it on all my devices. So although I had it on my desktop, I did not have the Chrome extension and I did not have it on my phone and I did not have it on my iPad. So I found it incredibly frustrating to use because I actually do hang out on my iPad and need the login information. That's why it was so easy to have them all in Chrome. I could open up my Chrome browser on anything and get to my passwords. Downloading the app on all devices was a game changer for me. And this was the hard part. This took a long time, probably two weeks. In hindsight, that doesn't seem like so long, but I had to do password resets for everything. So every time I logged in, I requested a password reset on all of my programs, on all of my apps, on my phone, on my iPad, everywhere. I had to do a password reset and then use the suggested passwords from, from one password. It takes patience to request those resets, to use the manager, generate new ones, and sometimes you have to copy and paste them back into the reset boxes. But here's my story now. I don't know how I live without this thing. It is amazing. I use it for text snippets. So if I need my address to go in somewhere, 1Password is dropping that in for me. It is dropping in credit card information. It knows all of my login information. It is magic once you get it going. The only thing I wish is that I had done it years ahead of when I did. Passwords are like toothbrushes. Don't share them. Don't reuse them and change them often. This is when the password manager comes in super handy. I'm just going to name a few. There's a ton of them. So there's one password. This is what I use. And when I am using one password, 
the nice thing about it is that I have the team options so that I have my team member in there too. We've created vaults so that Marissa can go ahead and log into the applications as well. I'm just going to pop open the Q&A and make sure I'm not missing something. Are you talking about what to do if you are not using a password management software or in conjunction with it? Um, in conjunction with it. So even I, I, I have seen it in the password manager apps where P, so you're probably talking about the last slide that I was just on. Let me just get to it. When I used, uh, when I said, don't share them, don't reuse them, change them often. So one of the problems in the password manager apps is that people circumvent and still, so they've got a password management app and then they are still putting in passwords that they like. So, you know, capital T I P P E T one, two, three, four exclamation mark. Not that that's my dog's name. Um, those are the kinds of things that I have seen them in there and they are still reusing them. The password manager apps will tell you if it's a reused password or, or if it's weak. It will, and I love this. I love that it congratulates me on really great passwords that it has generated. So that is not lost on me that. So yes, I, I see people doing this and I see people not changing their passwords. So even though you're using a password management app, it's still a good idea to roll through those and change them occasionally as well. And so then somebody said, isn't it I'm not ironic that we would need to put all our data uh, credit cards, passwords, etc. in a password management app when we are trying to create safeguard cyber security. Yes. Um, yes. This is encrypted information. So whether you choose not to use a password manager app, that, that's totally up to you. I do see the irony of it. This is also why I download that information. Um, the original password that you have in that password application, you need to make sure that it is psychotically safe that you again are not using your dog name or your child's name uh, to log into your password management application. But I would say that using a password management application is still better than using a system that has no um, depth to the type of passwords that you are using. One password, dash lane, last pass. This is a big one. If you have a, a team, uh, Practice Protect is one that is actually built for the accounting profession. So you may want to take a look at that one as well. Again, there's team versions of all of these. So Sam says, safer than a spreadsheet. Yep. And accounts are classic for having shared spreadsheets for passwords. I agree. So you've got to you've got to take that leap of faith at some point, and the spreadsheet is a lot less secure with the crazy passwords that we generate uh, through our spreadsheets. Um, so we're going to do a poll question: Have you implemented implemented a password manager program? And we're just going to let that sit there for a minute. And I am seeing something in the chat as well as the Q and A. So let's just take a quick look in there. Oh, just some stuff being put in. So, Fair. Yeah, so, sorry, since, Gary. Since you don't use your dog's name as your password, what did you say your dog's name is? Uh, I'm going to introduce them probably later anyways. Maybe they'll come in and join us. That's funny. Mm -hmm. that, our, our dog's name is Tipper. And is that what you said? No, it's a fly fishing <laughs> thing. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I know what Tippet is. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I didn't know what it was until we named our dog that. <laughs> Uh, our other dog is named Shark. One of our kids named it. She thought it was very funny that we live on a lake and uh, that we run around calling our dog Shark. So that's how that worked out. Okay. So um, how are we doing on the poll results? Uh, if you want to uh, get the CPE, you better answer it because we're going to close it out in about two more seconds here. One and two. Talk to them. You know, and oh, okay, 44%, uh, 17, yes, but have not fully implemented it. That was my story. And now there is just no turning back. And uh, no, 39%.
So, you know, one of the things that I would say, because I've debated this myself, and today is not the day to have the discussion, I guess, fully, but to anonymous attendee who suggested that it's ironic that we put everything into a password manager app. There's a couple of things I'd like to say to that. If you're not comfortable putting your credit card information in there, I certainly see that. Perhaps not your um, address. I can see that, it, you know, having access to an address might be something that is dodgy business for people as well. Put in, but if you are putting in app information, app passwords, the next step that's coming up for us all is going to be um, two-factor authorization. I would not have a password manager that I didn't have two-factor authorization. And I'll go back to the fact that um, I'll go back to the fact that that the password managers sometimes have two-factor authorization ability built into them as well. I don't use it. I don't want everything in one place. My two-factor authorization, um, I'm using two different ones. I'm actually using the Google Authenticator and I'm using something called Authy. Um, and so we will talk about the differences in those in a minute. So I cannot express enough to enable two-factor authorization on all of your apps. I mentioned this yesterday to anybody who was there, is that I have one program, one out of everything that I use that does not have two-factor authorization. It does not have client data in it. <clears throat> and so, um, that's that's how I've justified to myself. It's coming. I'm working with them. But every single thing otherwise that has data, either that clients own or that somebody could take my identity and then use it for nefarious things, all of those have two-factor authorization on them. So it is a second line of defense. If you don't know what two-factor authorization is, all it is is that you, you get um, this little app. When you go to log in, there's a second thing. So you need to do a, two, a second step of authorization. And these apps generate codes, and you put these codes in. And I'm going to do a, a little goofy thing. So the app is either on your phone or it can live in various places you can have the text codes um, shipped around if you want but one is called authy and one is called uh, the google authenticator app and it generates these codes that you then implement into the app so that one was the authenticator this one is something called authy and I use Authy when I need to share with my team member, Marissa, because we can have it on more than one device, meaning she can have the authenticator on her phone, I can have it on my phone, and we can have it on an iPad, we can have it in various locations. What it is not, none of the authenticators, because I do most of my work on a desktop, none of the authenticators are on my laptop or on my um, desktop. So Authy, uh, just to is a u t h y. So the key thing is to enable two factor authorization on all your applications. Consider dropping the apps that don't have them. And here's the key thing. This is another way. So this is really important in case an authenticator app goes down. Or if you need to share codes with team members and you don't have a way of shipping them around, all of the apps, when you implement two-factor authorization on them, so you'll go in and you'll go into security and then you'll want to implement two-factor authorization. Hey, Kelly, I think we lost your sound. How about now? Uh, sounding good. Okay, so these authenticate, when you go in to turn on two-factor auth authorization in the applications, it will give you the option of many of them, email, text, or um, 
uh, or an authenticator. Using an authenticator would be the gold standard. And the reason is that you are not shipping these codes around. They are not being emailed where they can be intercepted and they are not being sent by SMS. I will preface this that a lot of teams need to use the shipping method though, even if they're using an authenticator or SMS, then they are putting those codes. There's an automated system that we won't get into, but using either Zapier or some of Google Voice or whatever that puts those codes into Slack so that people can pick up the uh, two FA codes with the teams, you've really got to think about how you're going to do that. But the authenticators, when you go into, let's just use um, into it. So we're in QuickBooks Online. You go to turn on two-factor authorization. You decide to use the authenticator app on, on a mobile device. And then it will give you uh, a dozen or so codes that you can use in the event that you don't have your authenticator app. So you can put those codes into somewhere that you can share with the team so that even if you can't share on authenticator app or ship around the codes that they're giving you those are codes that you can also put into um, get yourself into the applications i didn't explain that really well but it's really not as complicated as i made it they'll give you 12 codes put them somewhere share them with your team and then you've got a place to go and enter codes if you can't use an authenticator app or sms text um, export the, uh, the data from your authenticator on a schedule. So just like I said, export the data from your um, password manager app. You can also export the data from your authenticator. So once a month or so, go ahead and make sure you have that. That way, if you lose or the mobile device is compromised or it's gone, um, you have your authenticator codes all set up and who you're doing it with and you don't have to set them all up again put the back backup code somewhere secure so you um, uh, may want to put that on a, a usb drive somewhere maybe you want to rename a file into something really stupid that nobody's going to figure out figure out a way to make those codes secure and um because just like your uh password manager or QuickBooks online, not that that happened yesterday or anything can go down. These, these authenticator apps can be offline as well. The device could be lost and you may need someone else to access them. So we've got another poll question. And so Gary's gonna put the poll question up. And if you have any questions, I got a little in the weeds of the authenticator app or two-factor authorization. If you need more clarity around that, either now or later, we can have a discussion about it. Um, just while we're waiting for the poll question, um, Linda, thank you for asking me about Authy. It is great because you can share it with multiple team members. It does not cover off uh, a whole lot of apps, though. So it covers off the major ones that I need. But for example, our payroll, we use WagePoint up here in Canada would be the Gusto equipment equivalent. WagePoint is not on the Authenticator app, for example. So that is a case where Marissa and I are using those extra backup codes because Authy doesn't support nearly as many apps as the Google Authenticator does. So how do you export the password manager or authentic without risking it? Are you saying copy to a USB? So yes, exporting the password manager, you can look it up because it's different for every one of them. And some of them you do it through the app on your desktop and some of them you actually do it through the browser base. But you can just go in, um, go to the settings and download all of the data. And yes, I am not then putting that data on my computer. So it is going to a USB because I don't want that data sitting somewhere that somebody can access it. I would rather, so I like having it on a USB because then I can restore it if I need it. I can also move it to other password applications, but um, password managers. But it is not something that my whole world 
revolves around. So if a password manager was down for a couple of hours and I needed to get into QuickBooks, I could do a reset, but I don't want to lose all of it. So I keep it totally offline on a USB. And um, that's what I do with that, just so that I always have that redundancy. Yes, the, shy, the slides are going to be shared. And so I think I've answered, how do you export the password manager without risking the data? Copy it to a USB. That's really what I would do. Uh, so only 30, 35 of you are using, 35% are using a two-factor authorization, please. This is the one of the number one things that you can do to prevent people from getting into your data. Oops, sorry, just trying to get, oh, oh I like it. Uh, here we go. Question. Uh, so gratuitous dog fun, shark on the on the left, tippet on the right, the sweet one and the enthusiastic one. So data location redundancy. I like to call this redundancy for the sake of redundancy. And I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, we had a fire in a building that we had our offices in, and in that uh but at the time, I had a, a marketing and branding company. I was working on compliance-based businesses doing um, design work. So these were huge files. These were expensive files for banks, insurance companies, all kinds of things. These were also files that related to compliance work. Everything that I was doing had securities commission component to them. So these were annual reports, let's say, that had to be somewhere by a certain date. The securities commissions had to review the files before we could go live on anything. This was important data, time sensitive data, and remarkably expensive files. And so I had three location redundancy at the time. I had a uh, an FTP site, which at the time was really ahead of it. Um, so we had stuff loaded onto an FTP site that I could transfer the files to my clients. My clients were lousy at managing their files though. So it really fell to me to looking after these files. We had them on clearly our machine. Um, so we were creating these files in, in the Adobe programs and InDesign and all of these things. So these were hosted on Macs. We had them on CDs. So every, every night, this was before Macs had Time Machine. Every night before the day was, when the day was done, it was part of our protocol to load any work in progress onto the CDs. And then we had a real-time backup hard drive connected to the machines. Those hard drives and CDs would leave the office at night. One of them, the CDs would be in my briefcase and come into my office, into my house. One of them would stay underneath the seat of my car. That was the hard drive would stay underneath the seat of my car. So nothing was ever in the same place. Nobody was having a sleepover together. Then we had a fire Friday, May 13th. And when we had that fire, that very evening, when we were leaving the office, we decided to go out for a friend's birthday. So I put my briefcase back in the car, kept the hard drives underneath my seat of my car. The reason the briefcase went back in is because we needed the extra space in the car. So the briefcase went back in. That is the night that we had the fire. Two locations were gone. The machines, the IMAX, gone. The CDs, gone. My really cool briefcase, super gone. All of my paperwork, everything else trashed. My accountant, however, had my, this is before I did my own books, he did have our accounting work uh, uh, on his machine somewhere else. So that was great news. So I had two locations wiped out at once. Please use the three location data redundancy. You will thank me. <laughs> um, so hopefully my story wasn't too dramatic. I'm just going to go to Linda's question. I will use Google Authenticator, Microsoft. I'm making an appointment. Woodard IT guy. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, Linda. My pleasure. Okay, so redundancy for the sake of redundancy. I just gave you a physical example of this. It is highly possible, though, to lose data in two locations in the cloud. 
So if you are backing them up to one place and then you have, let's say, and I'm not going to pick on into it, but let's say even Pluto or or Dex or any of the ones that we, we rely on, but Google has been known to wipe out files, not very often, but they're horror stories. YouTube, how about YouTube? We've seen a few of our friends in the accounting industry shut down and they did not have data location redundancy for their videos. So um, make sure that you've got three locations for them. And here's what it looks like for me. And it's not that it's all about Kelly, but I have set these up and I wanna share what data location redundancy can look like. So I have rewind on my QuickBooks online files for my clients and for my own file. I use something called Cloud HQ. Some people use Backblaze. Um, there's a number of these that you can use. I use Cloud HQ and I back up my entire Google workspace, including my email to Dropbox. Um, it also PDFs emails that I don't need anymore. So I have client folders and they're past clients. Some of you may have heard me yesterday say, I do love them and leave them engagements. So I bring on hot messes, clean them up and send them off. Or as somebody said last night in our uh, panel about Connect, she called it graduating. So we've graduated our clients. I don't need that, that data anymore sitting in my email. I can PDF that, but all of those PDFs still live on my Google, Google Drive or in my, yeah, Google Drive. So I am backing everything up. But what I can't do is back up some proprietary information. So spreadsheets are fine. Documents are fine. PDFs and emails, they're all fine, 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 fine. What's not fine is my Google Forms. I have created some Google Forms. So I actually have the same forms built in Google Forms as I have built in type form because I don't want to lose those forms that I use so often. So I have data location redundancy of proprietary apps, which would be forms. So Dropbox is where Cloud HQ goes. So I pay for Dropbox storage, I pay for Cloud HQ, and I pay for Google Workspace because all of those have so much meaning for me. I have uh, an external hard drive. I don't have one anymore. I actually have nothing that I don't need on my machine at all. There is nothing that if I lost my computer tomorrow, I couldn't start working within a few hours, which happened to me a couple of months ago. So accounting, Dext publishes to QuickBooks online. So that sends over the images. All QBO AR is BCC'd into Dex. So there's an email in address for Dex. It all pushes into Dex so that there is a hard copy, hard copy in the cloud, of what the invoices to my client's customers look like we have a point in time on that. Um, a custom backup report group, GL, AR, AP, trial balance. I also do profit and loss. The GL is, is an Excel file, is auto emailed monthly to Dex or weekly for the bigger clients as a single PDF. So we have a point in time on what the files look like. Like I mentioned, the GL is going as an Excel, so we can always manipulate that data, but I want everything, a hard copy of it there. Um, to, it is also emailed to an alias address so that it drops into my G drive. And I will say, if I had somebody with vendor contracts, I would not be emailing this information around. I don't email information where somebody can take it and then do nefarious activities for my clients. If this system of emailing is not going to work for you, I totally get that because email is not the most secure thing. I'm just telling you some systems you can automate systems you can put into place. But if I had vendor contracts, if these had customers, if my clients had customers with proprietary information of any form in their profit and loss or their GL, I would not be emailing these reports around. Instead, I would create a system where part of the monthly bookkeeping, you download that PDF and you put it into a storage site. Um, so custom GL. And then all documents from Dext are downloaded into client controlled folders. So when I onboard a client, one of the first things we do is we go into Dext and we connect their Dropbox, their G Drive, their share file, their OnePoint, whatever they're using. 
OneDrive so that they always have care and control of their documents, source documents, and whatever we are putting into DEX so that we have a full range of, of what's happened in there. And that is going into something that they control so that when I win that lottery and it's so huge that I just disappear, they don't need me. I've empowered them to keep going without me. QBO is backed up by Rewind, including the attachments. Google Workspace syncing in real time to Dropbox. All Google Chrome people are syncing to a corresponding Google account. Chrome people for me, I set up so that I have an accounting profile. You can Google this. I have an accounting profile. I have a productivity profile. I have a time waster profile. And I have all these folders and bookmarks and everything is set up. And I love the heck out of the way that I work efficiently in them. But um, I need them to continue to sync into these Google accounts so that no matter what device, where I'm working from, what happens to any devices, I can start working within minutes on a new device. Websites need to be backed up. I had a website that I loved. It was compromised. I had two backups. Those were compromised. It was gone. So I have implemented a third backup program for my website. Um, and that program looks like this. All of my blogs are, are copied to documents. All of my pages are copied so that um, I have them outside. I can, they're literally copy and pasted. All of my images, doc, media, everything is stored outside of the site. All of my products, because I have an e-commerce store, are uh, downloaded into an Airtable so that I've got all of those with all of the data that I need. And I do do backup copies uh, of my website as well. I know I'm a nut, right? Engagement contracts are PDF to a secondary site. So my contracts are done in a contracting program. I don't want them just in the contracting program. They are downloaded and PDF into my Google Drive. All in-app workflows exist as spreadsheets, not just in the proprietary software. I absolutely love my financial sense workflow. But all of my data from there is downloaded on a regular schedule into spreadsheets and into lists so that I have them somewhere other than just in a proprietary software. Contact information is shipped around by Zapier. So it's on a scheduler, practice management apps, QBO and CRM. Everything is coming down into a single source of truth spreadsheet. Am I sounding like a nut right now for everybody? Now we need to craft up a document. And I know I'm coming up to time, but I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to keep going. Craft up a document, share it with the world, so you now have your policies documented and announce them. You can use docs, slides, which are basically Word doc and PowerPoint. Use your website. I'm going to show you mine in a minute. Turn them into a contract for your team members. Your security is only as good as the lowest person implementing it. Have your clients implement two-factor authorization and password apps as well. Share this information with your clients and help them implement all of this. But somebody said yesterday, what if your team members aren't doing it? And I was a bit of a, a, bit of a hardball on it. I said in my world, that would be a firing offense turn it into a contract for them. I know that seems harsh, but you are the guardian of your client's data. Take it seriously. Okay, we got, a, we got our last poll question, and then I am going to call up a few things that I want to show you. And then we'll have a few minutes at the end. I'm not going to run over over or anything. So do you have a security policy document? So what that means is, have you documented all of the things that you need people to do? Um, uh, do you have protocols for all of this kind of stuff? And then have you created a document around it? Actually, even if you don't, uh, oh, yep. You can let me know when we're good on the poll, Gary. I say about five more seconds and we will shut it down. Again, if you need, uh... If you need CPE, you must participate. Three, two, and one. Thank you. Okay. So I'm interested in the answers. So 24% of you have implemented a security policy document. Go you. 
Um, you have policies, but not fully documented, yay. But 46% of you need to start to get this done. It doesn't matter if you're a solo, if you are a team, get this done. And I'm going to show you a couple of samples of it. So here we go. This is my website. Don't judge. So um, uh, I could do a lot more work on my website, but it's, it's not top of line right now. Uh, I got other fish to fry. But one of the things that is on it is my peace of mind and best practices. Oh, okay, Janice, thank you very much. Uh, Janice would like us to know that the correct term is multi-factor authentication, not authorization. I never mind being corrected. So multi-factor author authentication, not authorization. So thank you for that, Janice. Um, okay, peace of mind and best practices. So this is a, uh, a page on my website. It is uh, under the about, and it states what we do. Cloud-based technology company, yeah, 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 a nice little saying. We do not conduct work using public Wi-Fi. I couldn't even start to get into this. I could do a whole thing on not using Wi-Fi. I actually don't use Wi-Fi in any of these public spaces. Marissa and I have enough data to hotspot our phone and um, control the VPN on our phone and control the VPN on our laptop if we happen to be working on them. And that goes for hotels when I'm traveling for work as well. I do not sign on to um, Wi-Fi. We do not email your reports and documents. We make them easily accessible, except for the backup documents. And I know I'm working on this. It's a work in progress for all of us, how we do it. But um, I actually don't ship around those to my clients' email addresses. So have patience with me. All of us have a work in progress. I am looking at not auto emailing. I'm a little hooked on it, though, because it just magically happens. But um, my clients go into QuickBooks Online. I have set up groups of reports for them, and they grab their reports when they are ready to review. Um, so sensitive documents such as tax returns and articles in corporation are stored, stored on a site they control. I do not store any of the sensitive information. I also don't do taxes. If you need to have those for all time, as long as you have the engagement with your clients, make sure you are using not Google Drive, not some of these things. I love Google Drive. Um, it's secure enough for what I do, but I would be using Lysio or Sharefile or one of these other programs if I was doing tax work. Non-sensitives are going to be uh, G Drive and QBO custom reports. Everything is shared through Dex. We do not know or store banking access details. So we set up to do the connections with our clients in the beginning, and then I have empowered my clients to know how to fix those connections. So they fix them. We're not dealing with their two-factor authorization. And then um, we only use certified professional bookkeepers here in Canada. We do signed engagements. And in those signed engagements, not many people do this, but you might want to. Um, I have my clients sign off on the cloud, cloud technology that I'm using for them. So they... Um, they tick off and acknowledge that I am using um, Financial Sense. I am using Google Workspace. I am using whatever programs to do work for them. They also sign off and acknowledge that, that they are using cloud-based accounting programs. So that is Dex, Rewind, even the ones that they don't see, the, the front-facing ones, the file review ones, QuickBooks Online, and that they have their bank feeds connected. So I have them sign off and acknowledge that. Do I use a VPN when working from home? Yes. So my computer has something called Bitdefender on it. It's all set up. I pay a monthly fee to have my computer, both my laptop and my computer set up with security programs. Um, signed engagements, uh, e and as well as cybersecurity. We have a contingency plan. So I have somebody that knows all of my details. And in the event that something goes wrong with me, even though I have a team member, I also have a designated outside person from our team who can access everything in the moment. 
I had one client ever not want to sign on for my contingency plan. So he signed a document saying he's not going to do it. So my clients sign on knowing that I have a, a partner accounting firm that will take over should something happen to me, like win that lottery. These are my technology uh, protocols and away we go. And then um, you can create it. I created mine in a slide deck and then turned it into a PDF. And then I took it one step further and turned it into an ebook that's hosted on a site so that people can see it. It's way more fun. But I just wanted you to see that we do review, we do have this in place and that we share this. This is also part of our client um, collaboration guide. There is a section in it on peace of mind. So there's all kinds of ways to document your peace of mind statement. And if you are doing contracting, again, with your employees, have them sign off that they acknowledge and will use your security policies. Okay, I made it in time. And thank you to Swissnet, who I was in way with Swissnet two weeks ago or so at um, what was something called Appy Hour Camp, which is where educators in the accounting space and app partners came together. I was blown away by how smart the people from Swissnet that were there were. I, I did not know anything about them, and I was amazed by how smart they were. It was awesome. Um, and Sam saying, thank you. It was great talking to you there. No, Sam, the pleasure was all mine. I was like blown away by what you guys are doing. Um, okay, I've got another question. Would you, oh, oh, uh, Davo by my friends at Avalara, who doesn't love Avalara, especially when you are at, uh, you know, some of the accounting uh, conferences, they've been known to have, have set up for us to have fun. And of course, Tech Guru. Would you recommend firms to use a VPN for all members who, yes, who are working remotely from home, currently using their Wi-Fi? Yeah, I can use VPN. Sure. Uh, the other thing that I would do is have a, and I could have, I mean, you could do a security session for days and days and days. Um, not only would I have a VPN set up, um, so I would set them up with, in my case, it's Bitdefender. Um, you need a way, uh, I personally, I supply, I wouldn't let them use their own machines. So give them a computer, give them a second monitor, give them all the tools that they need to work and make sure you can wipe that darn thing clean. So if something goes wrong, you need to instantly be getting those employees out of it. And we did talk about that yesterday when we were talking about the accounting, uh, the security and QuickBooks Online. Get employees out of programs right away and have a way of wiping the machine clean. Uh, thank you, Carla, um, for sharing my knowledge. And we've got a few more minutes if anybody wants to take a question or um, I, and again, I didn't don't mind being corrected on my use of language here. So if somebody has a suggestion that I missed, that's kind of this high level security stuff. So this isn't the in the weeds VPN and what's the best malware program and all of that kind of stuff. This is the stuff you can implement within half an hour of leaving this session today. That's what we were doing here. But we've got a few more minutes if anybody else wants to jump in with some suggestions that you think would be valuable, because this is about all of us, not just about me yakking on to you. Gary, do you want to pop back in then? Yeah, I was just looking to see if there's anything else in the uh, in the chat. So there is one in there. I don't know if you answered this. It says, have you used SwissNet for hosting or how about Right Networks? So oh, um, if I had desktop programs, if I had a bigger accounting firm, I would be taking, after what I learned at Appy Hour Camp, I would be taking a good hard look at Swissnet mm -hmm. because it is, so here's what I thought Swissnet was. I Swissnet was basically the equivalent of QBox or Right Networks or any of these things. It is not. The name hosted accounting solutions does not even start to cover what SwissNet does. So if you have a firm and you are interested in all of this security stuff, I suggest you set up a meeting with the, with the smart people at SwissNet right now. Um, I'm not sure if that was really the question. I have not hosted desktop, I think four or five, year, five years ago was probably when I had my last hosted file. Um, don't host it on Dropbox, though. 
I did have corruption in there. It was the silliest thing. It was game changing in 2009 when I wanted to re work remote and had desktop clients. I used Dropbox. I had my clients upload PDF of source documents there. And we worked off of um, Dropbox. And it was, um, it was magic. But it wasn't OK when I look back on it. I wish we had had solutions like SwizzNet then. But take a good good hard look at SwizzNet for whoever, well, all of you. <laughs> um, Jonathan Bell, oh, hey, Jonathan, in there. But, uh, we're both missing the uh, roundtable labs right now then, I guess. Um, yes, yes there will. Yeah, so the form that he's talking about, I put a, um, you know, the IRS Security Summit produced yep. a kind of written information security plan, and we have that document that I think I just must have put the wrong link in there. I'm about to repost it. Thanks, Jonathan, oh, Thanks for letting me know that. Um, here's the correct one again. This is for the WISP from the IRS Security Summit. Um, that's the correct one. And you should see, I mean, the the as far as the presentation itself, it's in the chat. There's a link to our YouTube channel in the chat as well. I'll post that back in the chat right now before we uh, wrap up. So in case you don't have access to it for some reason. Um, so I'm just going to jump in here. Tracy uh, has her hand up. Tracy, do you have another question to ask or the hand is just stuck up? Because I know you not actually stuck up, but it is stuck in the up position. <laughs> um, if you do have a question before we go, you can just pop it in. Oh, the hand is gone. Okay. All well, right. There we go should have us covered. Kelly, thank you so much. Always uh, a, a wealth and depth of knowledge. It's greatly appreciated. And obviously with the feedback you got here, uh, I think you may have hit a couple of nerves uh, in a good way as far as uh, just the reminder of, of really one, the right thing to do. And then also, I, I don't know if it's a fiduciary responsibility. I think it is. I mean, and, and legal, I mean, by from per IRS. You're all considered um, financial professionals and you're covered under the written information security uh, plan. So you have to have it. It's not um, It's not like you've said before, I think you said yesterday, it's not if or when, maybe even said today, but um, put these things in place. Kelly is uh, available, I'm sure. Um, what was your uh, the URL to your super fancy website there? terrible piece of crap website that I need to work on. By the uh, way, um, not only is my website an endless work in progress, uh, I had to slap it together and it's not what I want because uh, that was the one that got corrupted. Um, so it's calmwater, C-A-L-M-W-A-T-E-R-S dot C-A, calmwaters uh, dot C-A. Um, Kelly Parks on all sorts of social media. I have a Facebook group. It's called the workflow watering hole. Answer the questions if you ask to join. If you don't answer the question, if I'm in a bad mood, I won't let you in. Um, but I want to say not only is my website a work in progress, so, so are my security policies. They will never be done. They will never be perfect. You heard that I'm grappling with the ease of shipping the automated reports out of QuickBooks online into Dext. Um, but I don't email anything else otherwise with my clients. So we all kind of go, oh, shoot, on some of the stuff that we're doing. And then we give ourselves the little wins. Implementing the password manager changed my game. 